Hello, and welcome to the Answers How To video. My name is Ian Bommel, and I'm about to show you how you can build your first chatbot using InfoBip's chatbot building platform. You've probably already seen the Answers Overview video, where we covered some basic chatbot terms and platform fundamentals. But if you haven't, I recommend you check it out because it gives you a really good head start on your chatbot building journey. We'll create a simple rule-based chatbot that can interact with a customer in an engaging and conversational manner. As you get the basics down, you'll be able to work with answers on your own and explore different platform features that will allow you to build more complex and advanced chatbots. Now let's get to it. Now let's create our first dialog. It will be a welcome dialogue that the users will be engaged in every time they initiate the conversation with the chatbot. Just like in real life, when we meet someone for the first time, we introduce ourselves and have the other person introduce themselves, hopefully memorizing their name. The same goes for chatbots. That's why, as a starting point, we'll use the attribute element, which can store the info obtained through the chatbot session. We'll just drag the element into the canvas. It contains the question, the name, and the type of attribute where the answer will be stored. In this case, we'll create a textual attribute titled name. The element also contains the repeat and fallback messages. If the customer doesn't respond in the expected way, the chatbot will first send a repeat message instructing the customer to rephrase their input. Suppose the misunderstanding persists. For example, the chatbot expects a number but receives a text, even after repeating a message trying to clarify the input needed. In that case, the bot will send a fallback message and redirect the customer to any dialogue we want, for example, the default dialogue. Once again, we're simulating real-life conversations. When we fail to understand someone, we ask them to repeat themselves or rephrase what they've said. If that turns out to be unsuccessful, we often just change the topic. Once our customer provided their name, we can use it in the conversation. For example, we can send it in a text message. The text message element is simple and straightforward, so there are no additional settings around it. Now that we're done with the introductory part, we can move on to the chatbot menu. For that purpose, we will create a new dialog called Menu, where the customer will be redirected after the welcome message. We need to connect the menu dialog with the previous one, and to do that, we'll use the Go to Dialog element, where we can select the menu dialog. The next step is creating the menu. First, we'll put in the delay element. Here's a useful user experience tip. If your bot is sending multiple messages in a row to a customer, make sure there's a few seconds buffer between them to simulate real life chatting. A two second delay is a typical value. The delay will be followed by the menu. Our chatbot will be able to share or collect information. We'll inform the customer about these options by using the text element. After the customer receives the menu, we expect their input, for example, a keyword. To set the stage for their input and evaluate it, we need to use the user input element. In this case, we expect one of two possible options, number one or number two, so we'll create those keywords. Some users might not write the actual number, but write in letters or type in a word from the menu. That's where synonyms come in. We'll go to the keyword panel and cover as many alternatives to the expected input as necessary. In this case, to choose number one option from the menu, our customer might type in one in letters, about, or even company. By using synonyms, you make sure your bot recognizes the customer's response, even if it's not the most obvious one. For this element, we should also have the repeat and fallback text. When the bot recognizes the choice, it needs to take action based on that choice. Since the two options we provided are two separate processes, we'll need to create two new dialogues, share some info company, and get some info user onboarding. When they are created, we have to map them with the customer's choice using the go to dialogue element. You can make your chatbot more engaging by adding different types of media to the conversation, like documents, images, 
or video. So for example, if a customer wants to know more about our company, we can share a short video instead of sending a few chunks of plain text. Once again, it's pretty straightforward. We'll just drag and drop the video element and choose the video we want to send. Video can be uploaded or shared via a link. We'll embed a link and add a short video description. To make the whole conversation more interactive, we can prompt customers to provide feedback on their chatbot experience. It can be as simple as asking, do you want to finish the conversation? Yes or no. To do that, we'll create another dialogue, which we can then use in multiple engagements of this type. This is yet another menu, so we will follow the same logic as before. Add delay, offer a menu in the text, and evaluate the keyword input. To do that, we will define two keywords, yes and no, and their synonyms. We'll create a new dialogue for each option and redirect the customer to one or the other based upon their choice. If the customer wants to continue, we'll take them to the menu dialog. Otherwise, we'll create a goodbye dialog to close the conversation. Now, let's set the details for get some info dialog. We are collecting the customer's information that we want our chatbot to memorize. So we'll use a combination of attribute and delay elements. We'll ask the customer to share their phone number. This info will be stored in the attribute called number defined as the phone number type. After that, we will need to define the repeat and fallback messages. We'll do the same thing for our next question, asking our customer who their chatbot provider is and saving that info in a simple text attribute. Now, let's say we want to process collected info a bit. We can create a new dialog, process user info, and connect it with our existing dialog using go to dialog element. To process customer info, in this case, we'll use a conditions element. We want to check who the customer's chatbot provider is, and based on that, send a message. We'll send one message if the provider is InfoBip, and another if it's some other provider. For the first scenario, we'll send an image and a simple text message for the second. The image element is similar to video. You can upload an image or share a link with the image description. We'll send an image of people high-fiving to customers who stated that their provider is InfoBip and a funny text to the others. When they've reached the end of the dialog, we can ask customers whether they want to continue by going to the menu or if they want to end the conversation. Again, we'll use the continue or finish dialog for the interaction. Now let's take a closer look at the dialogs coming after continue or finish. I've already mentioned that with the continue dialog, users get back to the menu and can continue the interaction. In the goodbye message dialog, we need to set a short delay once again and close the conversation with an appropriate message. For example, we can use the customer's name and an emoji to leave a positive impression. At this point, our customer is done chatting with the bot, so we can close the session as well using the close session element. And that's it. Our chatbot is ready to be tested. All we need to do now is make some final checks in other panels. As there are no intents in this chatbot, 
we can skip the intent panel and go directly to the attributes panel. Here we see the list of the three attributes that we've created, including their name, type, and scope. The chatbot provider attribute needs to be a global because it's used in more than one dialogue. In this case, we've collected the attribute in one dialogue and then processed it in another. Let's just double check the keywords panel to make sure that we have at least one synonym for each keyword, which we have, so we're good to go. And that's it. Our chatbot is complete, and now we can see it to come to life as we test it in the simulator. That's pretty much all it takes to build a simple chatbot that can share information with customers or collect information from them. To make your interaction more engaging, you can always use different media elements, such as videos, images, or documents. To collect info, you can either use user input element for keywords or attribute element for specific values you want to store for future reference. As for some useful user experience tips, make sure your chatbot introduces itself to your customers at the beginning of their conversation and set up your welcome and goodbye messages. Also, be mindful of the emojis you use to make sure that they match the tone of your voice of your chatbot. You should address the customer by their name throughout the conversation to make the interaction more personal. And finally, don't forget repeat and fallback messages. That's it for me, now it's your turn. Check out the Answers free trial offers to get a better grasp of what the platform can do, because at this point, we've only scratched the surface. Or better yet, go ahead and create your own chatbot following the guidelines that I've shared, and build upon it, see where it takes you. Before you know it, you'll be able to make more complex and advanced chatbots. Thank you for watching.